Hi everybody. This is just a video to make sure that we're approaching problem sets in the right way. So first of all, um, when you turn in problem sets, we go through, uh, Professor Seablack and I go through, and we grade some of them for accuracy and we give targeted feedback on um, those questions. We also post fully worked solutions for all of the problems that we give you. Please make sure that you're reading through that feedback and looking over the solutions. Even if I take only five minutes per students, that means that it's eight hours to grade all of the problem sets um, each week. So that time that I'm putting in is to try to help you identify your mistakes but that skill is something that you also have to build on your own, and it's something I can help in office hours with also after the fact. For a lot of students, I put in the um, feedback this week, I can talk through this particular problem with you in office hours, um, and I really do mean that. It's not just a kind of setting things aside. I do want you to understand your mistakes. It's important for us to recognize that the problem solving process that we see each week in the example videos is meant to be the most robust process for figuring out these problems. It's actually more important to us that you're practicing that process than it is about getting to the right number answer. You can kind of think of this, um, this whole class is building a skill set. It's not specifically about the content, it's about the skills that we are applying to physics content, but it's skills that you will be using in your um, degree, your program, your career. So what we're really trying to do is to train you how to read situations and figure out what information you need in order to solve that problem. If all you do is type numbers into your calculator, you aren't actually training yourself on how to read the situation. It's kind of like if we're learning a musical instrument. That's also a um, skill that students build. If you are taking a class to learn guitar, one of the things that you're going to have to learn is how to read sheet music. That's kind of what's happening here in physics. We are applying specific um, our, our toolkit to specific problems, but each situation that comes up, each problem on the problem set, is like a song of sheet music that we just need to learn how to read. Now, the key thing about that analogy is if you're taking a guitar class and you're learning how to read sheet music, you will be able to apply that skill if you then go on to learn to play the piano or learn to play the clarinet. That's true here in physics too. A lot of you are going into programs where physics itself is not the focus, but the skill set that we are building is absolutely essential to your success in those programs. So the more effort you put into that setup and actually thinking about the situation and going through that kind of six step process we saw all throughout the example videos, the more useful it will be to future you because you are building up a skill set and not just trying to get from point A to point B with your calculator. Separately, so we're going to kind of keep this um, guitar playing analogy going for a bit. If you use Chegg or Study.com extensively to basically look up solutions to problems that you're feeling stuck with, I know those um, websites call themselves homework help, but they are homework doers. You aren't really learning anything if you're just copying down a, um, a problem that shows up on those websites. And it's worth noting that every time you see one of our um, problems on a website like that, that's been photocopied, that's, that's basically stealing our work. So um, there's a lot of morality issues around Chegg and study.com that a lot of students don't recognize, and we understand that. And I don't want you to think that we're trying to penalize you for cheating because it's really not about that. But instead, if you use those kinds of websites, first of all, we can tell right away. They're set up in totally different um, ways because it's some graduate student off uh, in a different part of the world that is answering these questions for you. And they're using different notation. It's not that they're necessarily wrong, although sometimes they are. 
Um, but it's that you're not actually practicing the skill that we're trying to practice. It's like if you were taking that guitar class and your instructor asked you to record a particular song and then send in that recording. It would be quite easy to have someone else play the guitar for you and send in that recording, right? The point, though, is that the problem sets are the place where we're able to make mistakes without losing very much credit. If you try every single problem on the problem set, you give it a really good effort, but nothing's quite making sense to you, the very lowest score you will get is three points out of five. And for the most part, if a lot of things are making sense or you're willing to come to office hours, then that score jumps up higher and higher so that if you've actually asked questions and had some of those sticking points answered, you're very likely going to average 4.5 out of 5, even if there's still several mistakes on your assignment. But if you turn in these assignments that aren't really yours, then you're not getting a chance to make those mistakes when the points are a tenth of a point for an issue or two tenths of a point for a bigger issue. But the first time that you make those mistakes is at test time, where a major physics mistake is three or four points for a single problem, because that's really the place where you are now on stage with your guitar in front of um, an audience, and you can't have someone else be doing that for you. So I really urge you to think about these problem sets as the low stakes practice that we just want you to try everything. Our problem sets tend to be almost exactly one of each major type of problem. For example, if you think back to the chapter two problem set, we have a speeding up from rest problem, we have a slowing down problem, we have a speeding up from an initial velocity problem. When we get to the falling objects section, we have a drop an object problem, we have a throw an object up problem, and a throw an object down problem. We really aren't trying to make these busy work. It's really our chance to give you one example of each possible sticking point so that you can see all those possible sticking points and fix them before test time. But if you're letting either a um, homework website or you're letting the tutors um, at GRCC help you a little bit too much, um, or you're kind of working with a friend a little too closely, it's less about the cheating aspect that really is never a good thing to let someone else do your work, but it's more about the fact that we can see already, we can see the students who are turning in work that really isn't theirs and Professor Seablack and I can already see the major car crash that comes at test one because we've seen it in previous semesters. We want to prevent that. We don't want anyone to fail. And I really need us to recognize that one of the key distinguishing factors between success in this class and not is practice. Just like learning a musical instrument, just like learning um, a sport or a foreign language, it is about building the skill, and the only way to do that is to try over and over. We're not memorizing a bunch of stuff. One thing that's worth recognizing is some students try to approach this class by seeing the examples that we give in class, basically memorizing how they work and trying to find identical examples on the homework. These aren't cookie cutter problems. Remember, the, the skill that we're building is how to read the problem. Back when I took um, piano lessons as a kid, I actually never learned how to read music during the like five or six years where I took piano lessons. Instead, I would memorize the songs I was given and be able to play them from memory. And when I had the sheet music, the way that I learned was kind of starting at middle C and just like counting up and down rather than being able to look and, and know how to play it right away. And so, the thing is, the only thing my piano teacher had to do to recognize that this wasn't going to be, um, or to recognize that I wasn't learning how to read the music, but I was able to play piano, right? Those are two separate skills, is they would just give me a new song to try to play. And I would be stuck there counting in my head, okay, it's up three notes, then down one, things like that. On the test, you will see new problems that are using all of the same skills that we're building, that new song. 
it is going to be really, really difficult for you if you have not been training yourself on how to go through the problem solving process and have instead just been focused on finding something similar enough that you can plug in numbers in the same way. We want to help you build that skill and office hours is one of the best ways to do that. But the other thing, and you hear me say it all throughout the example videos, but to really highlight what I mean, it is so important to recognize how the process within a single chapter, because each chapter is slightly different, but how the process within a single chapter is applied in the same way to a variety of very different looking problems. So uh, I guess the, the summary of this is that the very best way to approach problem sets is to put in your own effort and only your effort and not focus on any points that you might lose in these problem sets because the point is is if you've tried everything and reached out for help you will get a reasonable score on all the problem sets and the small amounts of points lost for you to make those mistakes is nothing compared to the fact that you now have a record of what things are tricky to you so that you can study them extra and prepare those specific sticking points before they show up again at test time. And now you feel more confident that you've found all of the, the weaknesses that you might want to build. So, I mean, the, the other thing that I can comment on is that this class isn't going to work if you don't watch the videos. The problem is the people who need to hear this, who haven't been watching the lecture videos and example videos, probably aren't going to watch this video either. Um, but please, please be aware that if you try to do the content in this course without watching the videos that we've created for you, it's like trying to build a piece of complex furniture, having thrown out the very detailed directions. So please, please try to um, ask for help when you need it. If you are finding it difficult to figure out the strategies for success in this class, we can talk through those in office hours. That's a conversation that I can really help us get back on track if I'm able to actually talk with you one-on-one um, -on -one in a synchronous kind of way. So hopefully this helps at least a little bit. Um, it might help you recognize how to approach the problem sets or where uh, to put your efforts and I hope to talk to a lot of you um, in office hours soon. Thanks for listening.